Hello, this is Richard Becker. This is watercolor video number one, materials. So I'm gonna explain everything you're gonna to need to know about the materials, things to use to paint your watercolor pictures. First off, you wanna have a pencil, just one of the regular yellow writing pencils is just fine. What you're gonna be doing is, in most cases, doing some drawing before you paint. So you wanna have a pencil with you. Then what you want to do is use a kneaded eraser. These are the type that stretch. So that's kneaded with a K, K-N-E-A-D, E D, kneaded. All the art stores carry these things. They're the most gentle thing to erase your pencil marks on the paper. You never want to scratch your paper, so this is the most efficient thing to use to erase your pencil marks. They also don't leave any crumbs behind, so there's nothing that you have to brush away later on. Now also what you always hear about watercolors, once you put it down, you can't change it. Well, that's not true. One of the tools you can use to change things to use for an eraser is a natural sponge. There's two different kinds, these flat ones called an elephant ear, round ones like this, either is just fine. What you're gonna be doing is getting that eraser nice and wet, squeezing it over and over again in the water, and then you're gonna go in and you'll be able to erase off most, if not all, of the watercolor that you put down there. So that's what you can use to erase correct mistakes. You wanna have something to put your water in, some kind of a jar, you want something fairly large. A cottage cheese or yogurt container works really good. The more you clean your brush out in the water, the dirtier the water gets. Pretty soon that water will start to affect your painting. So you want a large container so you don't need to change the water as often. You want to have uh, some paper for your watercolors. So you can buy paper in different forms. You can buy it in single sheets and usually cut them down smaller. You can buy them in pads. What I would recommend would be a block. This is where the paper is glued in around on all four sides and this holds the paper down flatter while you're working. There's um, a couple of brands I would recommend. This Montval made by the Canson company is pretty good. Their Canson is the manufacturer and Montval is the style of watercolor paper. Whenever you buy paper, you want to make sure it's 140 pounds and cold press. So it comes very th uh, much thinner and it comes much heavier. 140 pounds is what most people use and that's what I'd recommend. Another brand that's pretty good and reasonably priced is Fluid. And again, cold press finish, which means it's a medium surface paper, as opposed to the smooth, which is hot press. And then there's rough, get the cold press, which is medium. And you see how this is a nine by 12, or you could certainly get something larger. And if you wanna buy some really good paper, much more expensive, there's arches. This is probably the standard of good paper, arguably the best, so, but much more expensive. But again, it's 140 pounds and cold press. Whenever it says 100% cotton, that's a good sign that it's good paper. It also means it's gonna be pretty expensive. Now, of course, you can use whatever kind of paper you'd like, but I would recommend with all the supplies not to buy cheap stuff. You don't need to buy the most expensive materials. Generally start out with medium price materials and then you can always grade up and then after a while you may even find some of the cheaper materials work just fine and you can use those. But in the beginning, don't waste your time with cheap stuff. You may find it's just a big hindrance. Then we've got uh, the palette what you want to put your paint in. 
So most often what we're going to be doing is buying paint in tubes and squeezing that paint into the palette, taking the palette from the little wells into the pans here and mixing up your colors. There's lots of different kinds of palettes available. Something just as simple as this would be fine. If you are working at home or have more room, these really large ones are quite nice. There's also these ones with the tops that flip open and give you more space. Like that. So these are really good for traveling. What you want with your palettes is they should be white. Whenever you're painting with watercolors, you don't want a colored surface that'll interrupt the colors you're mixing up because the watercolor is transparent. You want something with storage areas like this, where you're always putting the same colors in the same place. And you want some fairly large mixing areas that quite often you're going to be works, mixing up several puddles of paint and you want to have those um, continually while you're working on the painting and then mixing up fresh color in other spaces. Now you see here that I haven't cleaned the palette out. The great thing about watercolor is that it never goes bad. You just add a little more water and the paint becomes fluid again and you can keep working with it. So generally what you do is you put out plenty of paint in the little wells, add some water that will reactivate the paint and you'll be able to keep using it. So unlike oils and acrylics that once the paint dries up you have to scrape it off and throw it away, watercolor just keeps working and working. So you see how bone dry that is, how solid that becomes. Add a little bit of water to it let it sit for a minute or so and then that paint will reactivate and you can mix it up and there we go. So watercolor palette. When you buy a palette make sure you don't get one with little tiny spaces. Make sure you have some fairly large areas to mix on. Now for the paints. Um, again, you probably want to buy medium priced materials at first. It's very hard to get new students to buy the expensive materials. Uh, two brands that are quite good and that most stores carry are Windsor Newton Cotman. That's Windsor and Newton and Cotman, C-O-T-M-A-N is the brand name. The other is Grumbacher and their, their uh, student grade paint is Academy. So student grade paint means that they're less expensive, but they don't go as far. You'll probably find this big difference in the art stores, that you've got these small tubes like this and these much larger tubes like this, and these tubes cost less than these, and you wonder what's going on here. This is more concentrated. This is called professional grade paint versus student grade paint. Now this is a much higher quality. They concentrate more in there so it extends out. So you're actually getting more paint uh, with this since you're mixing it with water. But in the beginning, you're probably gonna be buying student grade paint. So those two brands are certainly adequate and you can always buy up later on. So that is the Cotman by Windsor & Newton and that is the Grumbacher Academy. And this is uh, the Windsor & Newton Professional there. Now, uh, besides buying the individual tubes that'll go through, you can also buy sets of paint. And if you're just completely lost with all this, you can just buy a set and that would be fairly balanced. You always want some kind of balance with your colors, makes it much easier to mix things up, to mix varied colors. If you're on a budget, <clears throat> Reeves is very affordable, in fact, remarkably affordable. Now, its quality isn't quite as good as the uh, other two I mentioned, but it's okay. And these only come in sets. This is the 24. They also make a, I believe it's a 14 color set, which is uh, just fine. 
both the Winsor Newton and the Grumbacher, as well as most other brands, do have sets. And those would be just fine if you want to start with. But with most people, they're going to buy the paint in tubes like this. So what I would recommend getting would be a lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red medium, alizarin crimson. That's A-L-I-Z-A-R-I-N, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. That's often spelled T-H-A-L-O. Sometimes it's spelled P-T-H-A-L-O. And the Windsor Newton, I believe, is called Windsor Blue. Next color would be Hooker's Green, and it comes in three shades, a light, a medium, and a deep. Get the deep, so that's Hooker's Green Deep. Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and Ivory Black. Now, you don't need to have exactly these colors. There's many that would work in their place, but if I give you all the alternatives, it gets very confusing. So if you go into an art store and they don't have cadmium red medium, and they say this is almost the same color, that's just fine. Or if you buy a set, they may not be exactly the same colors I've listed, but that would be fine as well. So you want to have about 10 to 12 colors to start with. This is 11. And um, in the third video, I'll be explaining more about colors and uh, why these colors work particularly well. So uh, hopefully this will get you started in what you need to use. There's probably a few other things I'll go into as I do demonstrations that I'll suggest, but these would be more like just special effects materials toothbrushes, blades, Q-tips, things like that. Another thing you're always going to be using is some kind of paper towels um, to control the amount of liquid on your brush. So you want to have some paper towels, Kleenex, something like that, that you probably already have out already. Okay, so I hope this makes some sense, and the next video I'll be talking about how these materials work. So that will be the video number two. All right, so thank you very much, and I hopefully will see you later. Bye-bye.